Still moving stuff in. Still have an echo, but it is filling up in here. Little shaping block I made. A video will be coming soon. So anyway, I was out here messing with the goose and figured I would do like a standalone EFI how-to video. I don't know if it's really that because I'm not gonna really show you how to do anything, but maybe just give you enough insight on what standalone, how standalone EFI works. I know there's a lot of questions around it for, for those folks that have never fooled with it. Kind of let you wrap your head around how that works and why it could be very special. And uh, yeah, just like a just like a standalone EFI 101, like your basic entry video to what it does and how it works. So if you don't know, this is uh, my Twin Toro Fox. It's just a really basic setup. Twin 70s, 400 cubic inch, dart block. Uh, it's 351 based, power glide, 8.8. .8. Yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Still got it took apart. So let me put the dash and stuff back in it. So I'll, I will tell you that what this video is not gonna be, it's not gonna be an in-depth how-to if you just bought your first standalone EFI setup. This is not gonna be how to set it up, how to use it. This is also not about what standalone EFI is the best on the market. Um, what I will tell you is that the principles on how they work, all of them are all very, very similar, especially when it comes to um, the tables that are used to tell the algorithm what to be doing, right? So where the, where the really good ones separate themselves from the ones that aren't so good are usually in the external plugins and monitoring and um, some of the features that they can do. But when it comes down to the basic tables and how they work, they're pretty much all about the same. And that's really all I'm gonna show you in this video. So the setup I got in this car is, uh, it's a Big Stuff 3. Uh, and I've also got a digital 7 plus which is like an old-school uh, MSD setup that is also programmable and basically I just run those together so um, the big stuff 3 still does all the spark I still run all the spark tables and all that stuff and then I'll actually put the e MSD on top of that for little extra features that I like to use that the MSD has uh, I don't want the MSD do the spark on its own like I said, I use a spark table in the standalone setup. So let's fire up the laptop and I'll kind of show you what this looks like. All right, so let me back up just a little bit. When it comes to computer controlled systems within cars, um, what you'll find is in cars that are manufactured that you drive every day, probably every car you have at home, um, uses what is called a mass air meter, which is a meter that actually measures the amount of air that is coming into that, that engine. Based on that air measurement, the algorithm can figure out how much fuel it needs to make the correct fuel mixtures. And then it has a couple other variables in there as far as like water temp and air temp, and it'll change that algorithm based on those temperatures as well. I mean, that's like the simple version. Those systems work pretty well because if you make a change to the engine, say if you make a uh, cylinder head change or um, a header change, you know, an exhaust manifold or a header change, or you change a camshaft in it, that mass air meter is still measuring the amount of air that that engine is taking in um, even if it happens to be more or less based on the modifications that you've made, it can compensate with more or less fuel and it's still going to have a good air fuel mixture, still going to run properly, even though you've made those modifications. I hope, hope I haven't lost you yet. So for some of you older guys, probably like the um, mid eighties, you probably heard the word speed density. Now speed density works a little different doesn't measure the air with a mass air meter. Uh, it does calculations based on load and it figures the load based on the 
suction or non-suction, see how to explain this. It does things a little bit differently in that it calculates everything based on load. And it knows that load basically by the vacuum on the intake. Okay, so at idle, that thing's at full vacuum, you give a little gas, it knows the throttle position sensor, it knows there's less vacuum, it kind of takes a couple little small things in consideration. It looks at a fuel table and knows how much fuel to put in that motor based on that particular load, RPM, and throttle position. I'm guessing that's about what it uses. It also calculates water temp and air temp to, to make the right calculations as well. And it works really well as long as you don't mess with the engine. So as soon as you kind of change the volumetric efficiency or how that, that motor moves there, how efficiently that motor moves there, then the table that is pre-programmed from the factory no longer works. It's no longer sufficient for that setup. Now, why do I tell you this? Well, because standalone ECUs, you can run, well, a lot of them you can run anything you want. You could run a mass air meter if you want to. Most people, though, they run them in speed density mode. So you do away with the mass air meter, you run it in speed density mode. The difference is instead of using a pre-programmed algorithm that the factory creates, you create your own. If you make a change to the engine, you just have to go in there and kind of change some of the parameters to either make it more or less efficient or to compensate for the for it being more or less efficient. Hope that makes sense. You'll kind of understand it a little bit more when we get in here. So I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole because they can get really in depth. I want to try to keep it as simple as I can. And so basically these systems work on three tables. So think of like a graph table. You have um, load over here and RPM. Very simply, right? More load, more RPM. Like if you whack the throttle at 2000 RPMs, that's lots of load, but it's only 2000 RPMs worth of throttle. Versus if you keep the throttle, that load's gonna stay the same, but it's gonna move down the, down the chart as the RPMs rise. Does that make sense? And so that's how every chart works. And then you have several different charts. Um, you have a spark table. You have a volu volumetric efficiency table, which is basically also called a fuel table. It's basically telling the motor how much fuel it should be putting in the engine at that given moment uh, within that table. And then you have an AFR table, which is the air fuel ratio. Um, you can kind of set that and some of these self-tuning programs will can tune to that table. So if it gets to a certain section and you have the air fuel ratio set, the, the optimum air fuel ratio set at say uh, 12 to one, and it's reading something different, it may change the cell a little bit within the fuel table to compensate for that. And it, a lot of these programs will allow you to change it up to a percentage. So let's dive in, we'll kind of look at these tables. Like I said, I don't want to make it super confusing. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense when we get in here. So this thing's just connected via USB right into the program itself. And basically I can, oh shit, I don't have the power on. All right, let me go turn the power on and try this again. All right. Okay, so I can just turn the computer on itself, primes the pump, and then I can just open this up. Let's see, open last project. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see within this program, like I said, all of them are gonna be a little bit different. Maybe you got like engine RPM, throttle position, and if I were to depress the throttle, you'd actually see that percentage change as the throttle blade m moves through its cycle. Got air fuel ratio, duty cycle. This is um, the amount of time the injectors stay open on each pulse, so that changes based on RPMs and fuel needs. Manifold air temp, so currently 78 degrees. Coolant temp, 76 degrees. Well, let's see, here. ignition timing. So like when we look at the spark table, that's where the timing is gonna be done. And load. And then it's got some other 
other things too. Now when I fire this thing up, it'll actually, all these will be changing, doing their things. And then it's also got some, so this particular system will turn the fans on and off at different uh, temperature ranges. I can kind of set those where I want to. It's got multiple pumps set up in this thing. So you could have multiple pumps go on. You could have it technically like kick on, say a second pump when it starts to make boost. Uh, you know, you need more fuel demand and that way you're not riding around on two pumps, three pumps, or, or what have you. So let's open up a table. All right, so this is a fuel table. I'm going to fight the glare a little bit. So this is a fuel table. And like I said, this is load. So this is load in KPA. Uh, which is like atmospheric pressure. I think that's what it is. And then you have RPMs. So 600, 800,000 goes all the way up to 7,000 RPMs. Now, every system you can kind of change these. Like if you wanted to twist your engine to 10,000 RPMs, you could change that. If you were going to make tons of boost, you could move this. You can make this uh, fuel table go higher in load. You could have it go lower and load. You could kind of have it to do whatever you need it to do. All right, and then it shows just a 3D version of that same, you know, if you took this and made it 3D, that's what it's gonna look like. And some of them will allow you to spin them and let's see if we can, yeah, so you can spin these and kind of look at how it's shaped. I've been tweaking on this one a little bit. It still needs a little bit of work. And then over here, you have all the same gauges that you had before. Um, some of them are color coded based on, um, you know, if it's within the gauge. So you can actually set these up as gauges. It's so like air fuel ratio. As long as it stays between 13 and 15, it won't have a color. As soon as it goes below 13 or above 15, it's going to turn yellow. And then any higher than that or lower than that, it's going to turn red. And the actual square itself will do that. Same thing with the temperatures. Um, like this one here is the coolant temp and so right now it's yellow basically meaning that it's not warmed up I don't have the coolant temp gauge shown here which I could if I wanted to you can actually change each one of these to whatever you want and so that's the tuning and dyno view um, it's got some multiple views you can use so this one shows the fuel table right on top of the spark table now when I say tables, the way this works is if I were to start this car right now, you'd see a little dot on this screen based on where it is on this table. So if it idled at, you know, 800 RPMs, then the dot would be right in here somewhere, at low load, and then if I revved it, um, it would do this kind of circle thing really fast and you kind of see it move. What it does as it moves through these squares, that's what it sets the timing or the fuel or whatever table it's in, that's what it sets it at. So if you want to know what the timing is, at say 2000 RPMs at full throttle, it's going to be 27 degrees. Okay? That's what all that means. And if you're up here and then you let off, say you're at, uh, let's see, like 6000 RPMs and you let off, well, load's going to go down and the RPMs are going to creep back. And so you got lots of timing like up in 40 degrees of timing just to burn off all the extra fuel. So that's how that works. And it kind of works in every section. And for the most part, this section up here is never used. And this section down here is not really ever used. Especially in drag racing. Usually in drag racing, um, you know, you bring it up on the two-step somewhere in here. And then it goes, or actually I guess it would be wide open would be up in here. And then it just kind of travels across the top. And then you let off, it kind of comes down and back. Like I said, I hope that makes sense so far. I don't want to lose you guys, but it is really that simple. Everything is, all the hard work is now taken care of in a lot of this modern technology. It's all table-based. Um, as a tuner, the hard part is knowing how much timing you can get away with without tearing something up and how much fuel it needs or doesn't need, right? And those are really only things that you can kind of figure out by playing around. There's not one set table that works across the board. Every vehicle is different. Even vehicles with the same combination are even different. Especially if the weights are different in the car, the gear ratio is different, the transmission, 
converter, all that stuff affects how these tables react. A lighter car can handle more timing. A heavier car can't. I mean, it's gonna, a lighter car is gonna accelerate through the RPMs faster than a heavy car. Like there's gear ratio, the same exact motor combination and weight, just the gearing will affect the tune up in it based on how fast it comes through, through those, through the RPMs. The other thing that's cool is these things do all kinds of stuff that is not just what I've shown you. So they can sense gear changes and know which gear you're in. You can change the um, rev limiter differently in each gear. So if it knows what gear you're in, you can change the rev limiter in each gear. You can change the timing in each gear. So a lot of times, kind of goes back to what I was just talking about. First gear, that thing's gonna roll through the RPMs much faster than it's gonna do it in high gear or in fourth gear depending on what kind of transmission you have. Um, so for that simple thing, you could technically get away with more timing in lower gears than you can in higher gear. And so if you wanted to be that precise, you could actually change the timing curves or the timing tables within each gear ratio. Um, a lot of extra data logging features too on some of these really nice ones. You can do drive shaft RPM, you can do um, wheel speed, you can do uh, tur uh, turbo turbine wheel speed. So it actually tell you how many RPMs the actual turbine on the on the turbos is spinning. You can do trans temps and uh, brake pressures and fuel pressure temps. And where that comes in handy is you can data log all that stuff real time and then come back and look at it. You can see, you know, what's happening on the line, what's happening if you, have a, if you feel a weird spot, whether you're at the track, if you're drifting or if you're drag racing or whatever it is, you feel something happened weird, you can go back to the log and kind of look through everything and see what it was. If the brakes felt spongy, if you know, if, if it kind of hiccuped a little bit, you can see if the, the fuel pressure changed. You can watch the air-fuel ratio the entire time through that pass or that run. And if you feel like it got lean in a certain area, you can go back and look and see right on the table where that lean spot happened. And then you can go in there and adjust accordingly so very complex but again very very simple so let's see so that's fuel and spark um, it's got an auto-tune feature so this thing will auto-tune I can basically just go in here and set um, if it's actually logging it right now even though the car's not running but you can go in here and set you know air fuel ratios you know, um, optimum air fuel ratios in certain areas where, you know, where you basically want this thing to be. And then you can tell it that I'll, you know, I'll allow the, the software to adjust within a percentage on its own. Then you can come back in here and look at the data, kind of see what it's done. Now, when I was telling you, it had like a little square that told you where you're at in the graph. That's what it looks like. Or I said a little dot. So that's what you're looking at. See, right now we're sitting here and that's just air that's just ambient air pressure so there's no vacuum and there's no boost and then we're obviously at no rpms so i didn't really discuss it but volumetric efficiency the easy way to explain that would be if you have a uh, 400 cubic inch engine okay um 100 volumetric efficiency would mean that after it goes through one complete cycle it would, which is two revolutions, it would, or four strokes, it would have moved 400 cubic inches of air. That's 100% volumetric efficiency, okay? Nothing's that efficient. You don't move 100% of the air that you're trying to, especially at higher RPMs. You lose volumetric efficiency the higher the RPMs are. Um, and really the higher you can get your volumetric efficiency is the higher, the more, horsepower the thing is going to make. That's why people port their cylinder heads and want to flow more air through the cylinder heads and that's why you use specific cam profiles and all that kind of thing. So anyway, just to give you kind of the Cliff Notes version of what volumetric efficiency is, it's basically if that thing can move the volume that it has, 100% of the volume it has and it has 100% volumetric efficiency. And so that's what all these tables are based on. So, and then this one has like a notes section, you can write notes. Um, like if I were to data log, I could start logging right now. 
ask me what I want to save the file as, I can save it, and it's going to start data logging right now, real time. Now, it's, you can actually put in here what it is you want to log, so it'll watch, you know, whatever you want it to watch, it'll watch it, and then actually graph it on here real time. Obviously, it's not doing anything right now because, well, the engine's not running. Let's see, let's stop this. And like I said, you can go over here and look. There's the dots. And what's cool is after, say I were to go make a test hit on the street, it's gonna log all this stuff real time, and it, this thing's gonna move real time. And afterwards, I can go back and I can actually play this, play it back, just like I was there. And I can sit there and watch it. I can go you know, frame by frame, I can slow it down, I can do whatever I want, and I can watch this move through these tables real time. Pretty cool. And then it's got, you know, every known thing at the bottom that you could possibly data log. Even to the point where I could see where the fans came on or off. See fan off. And the ones that have colors are the ones that would log, so that that box is cool it and it'd be blue right here up on the graph um, you got the O2 correction and that would show up as yellow up here and you've got the map sensor so that would show up as red up here so you can see all these things TPS so you can see when you're in the throttle half throttle let off you can see all that stuff now would just log green super in-depth like I said uh, the, the guys that create this stuff the fuel techs the fast the Holly EFI, the, the Big Stuff 3, those guys um, basically took what essentially in the beginning was just the graphs and then they've added all these extra features with it which allows them to be very great and allows you to just tune these things to the minute nth degree basically. I mean I probably won't use nowhere near the features these things have because well I, mean, I just I just I'm use this car to take the wife on dates. I guess I didn't really explain it very well either, but if I wanted to go in here, say I wanted to make a change on this thing, um, I could just click that cell, it's going to open up, and then I can either, well, well, let's see, 54 is what it was, I think. So, you can click the cell, and then I could go up or down, just with some keystrokes. And then what it's going to tell me is if I can move on, see that one's still black? Well, this one's red. It's because I changed it. It's probably like 55 or 56, probably. So it's going to, you can basically see where, where it was, where it wasn't. If you changed it, if you didn't change it, it's going to show you. And then what it's going to do is towards the end, or, you know, I'm going to have to save this or actually download it to the software. To the to the brain itself or save this program as something else so that's the other thing that's pretty rad with these two is you can save all your programs you can have different programs depending on what you're doing um, if you got a, like a drag race program if you got a uh, you know if you had a car that was like multifunctional if you had like a road race program you could save all these programs in there name them you go to the track you upload the program you want and you're ready to rock and roll you can also save programs based on weather conditions and um, track conditions and that sort of thing you know if the guys that do the drag race and they save all their programs that went fast um, in certain weather conditions and then what they can do is later on they can actually go back sort through their data find out what passes they made in the past that had the similar conditions pull those up and see you know how far different that tune-up is compared to what they're currently running either go back to it or make some small changes. What else? I'm trying to think if I've skipped over anything too fast or just totally missed some things altogether. Anyway, I think that's it. Hopefully, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully I didn't skip over anything or like just glaze through things too fast. It's really kind of the nuts and bolts of Standalone EFI. If you have any questions, be you know, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer what I can. And 
yeah, I hope maybe that kind of allowed you to wrap your head around standalone EFI a little bit. It's not as voodoo as a lot of people make it. I mean, it is. It's voodoo when you get down to like the minus de the you know minute details and what those details are going to do to certain combinations and you know how to spool turbos faster and all that stuff is a little bit voodoo. But like the just buying one of these systems and installing it and getting it to run and drive, it's not terribly difficult to do. So, yeah. Hi right, guys, that's all I got for your day. I got another video coming, the Fab Block video should be up this week. And then I'm um, currently filming a video on the Bibster, so maybe I'll have that this week too. Been a little sick. So I'm trying to shake that. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son. Mm -hmm.